Hi everyone, welcome to Data Science with Marco. Today we will cover linear regression. We'll go through some theory at first, and then we will move on to some coding exercises with Python. Let's get started. Let's kick off this lesson with some theory. We start with a simple linear regression, where our target y only depends on one variable x and a constant. Beta 1 is then a parameter, positive or negative, that characterizes the slope. To find the parameters, we need to minimize a certain error function. Here, the error is simply the difference between the real target, y, and the prediction, y hat. For linear regression, we minimize the sum of squared errors. So we raise this equation to the power of 2 and add all errors across all data points. Visually, it looks like this. The red dots represent our data and the blue line is our fitted straight line. Each vertical line is the magnitude of the error. So we want to position the blue line such as the sum of the squared length of each vertical line is as small as possible. You might wonder why we square the errors. As you saw, the points can lie above or below the fitted line, and so the error can be either positive or negative. If we did not square the error, we could be adding a bunch of negative errors and reduce the sum of errors. It would trick us into thinking that we are fitting a good straight line, where in fact we're not. It also has the added advantage of penalizing large errors, so we really get the best fit possible. For simple linear regression, you can find the parameters analytically with these formulas, where x bar is the mean of the independent variable and y bar is the mean of the target. Once you have your coefficients, you need a way to assess their relevance. To do so, we use the p-value. This allows us to quantify statistical significance and determine if we can reject the null hypothesis or not. When modeling, we usually pose the hypothesis that there is a correlation between a variable and the target. The null hypothesis is then the opposite of our hypothesis. As a rule of thumb, if p is less than 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. Once we know our parameters are relevant, we must assess the model itself. We usually use the residual standard error. Of course, the smaller the value, the better it is, since the difference between predicted and actual is small. Also, we use the R-squared value, which measures the proportion of variability explained by a feature X. As it approaches 1, it means that we are explaining a lot of the variability in our target. From here, multiple linear regression is easy to understand, as we simply extend the model to accommodate more features. Each feature has its own parameters, beta, and here p is the number of predictors. To assess the model, we use the f statistic. Here, p is the number of predictors and n is the number of data points. Usually, if f is much greater than 1, we say that there is a strong relationship between our predictors and the target. For a small data set of, say, a couple hundred data points, then the f statistic has to be way larger than 1. So that's it for the theory, let's move on to some code. So let's fire up our Jupyter Notebooks. Here I have a folder called data, which contains a data set for this exercise. So uh, as with any project, we start off by importing the libraries we will use. So of course, we're gonna use pandas as pd, let's import numpy as np. Now it's time to import uh, matplotlib, um, and uh, because we will use that, of course, to do some plots of our data, plot of straight lines and scatter plots. Then we're going to use scikit-learn to actually fit a linear model to our uh, data set. Linear regression, and uh, finally we'll also import a stats library, so stats models dot. API as SM, and that will give us some very cool um, statistical tests to uh, test for our predictors and model in general. And of course, we use some Python magic to plot. So let's start off by importing our data set. So data is equal to pd.read CSV. I put in the path of my data, so data slash advertising.csv, and then I will specify the index call equal to zero and that means that the first column will be used as the index column in our data set doing data.head you should see the following first five entries of our data so as you can see we have 
um, ad spend on TV, radio, and newspaper, and the impact on sales. So we start off with some simple linear regression. So we will only consider the effect of TV on sales in this case. Feel free to take radio or newspaper. So I always like to do a quick plot of my data whenever possible. And in this case, because we only have one feature, one target, uh, it is indeed possible. So I first set the size of my figure and then we do a scatter plot. So I specify the X, which is going to be data TV, the Y is data sales, and then I specify the color. I want it to be black. Afterwards, I'm just doing making my plot uh, a bit nicer. So I just specify an X label. Um, so it's going to be money spent on TV ads and the units is money. So just dollar sign and then plt.y label is going to be equal. Actually, no, I do not have to put an equal sign here. I need to remove that. So remove this, remove this. All right, perfect. And now I do, uh, this is going to be sales and it's going to be in thousands of dollars. Perfect. Finally, I do plt.show and you should see the following plot. There you go. As you can see, so this is our data. So the sales with respect to the money spent on TV ads. Now maybe a linear line, uh, linear regression is not the best model here, but let's try it anyways. So we're going to specify our uh, feature, which in this case is only uh, the data uh, TV. So the values are reshape minus one, one as required by the scikit-learn library. And then we specify the target, which is our sales the values are reshape minus one, one. Perfect. Now we simply call the uh, regression model. So reg is going to be equal to a linear regression. And then we will fit the model to our data. We pass in X and Y. Awesome. And with that, we can print uh, our parameters. So we can print our um, uh, constant and coefficient for TV. So the linear model is Y is going to be equal to. So first we're going to access, uh, actually we're going to access the intercept first. Uh, so you intercept underscore zero. And then we add the coefficient um, for X, so in this case TV, and the coefficient is equivalent to beta 1 if you looked at the theory portion of this video. So as you can see, we get a uh, constant of 7 and a slope of 0 0.0475 approximately. So that's great. We have a positive slope, positive constant. It seems to make sense. So let's get some predictions and actually plot our straight line. So you can get the prediction simply by calling the predict method on X. And then we do another figure. So I'm always, again, uh, just setting um, the fix size here, not curly braces. Sorry about that. It's actually just normal parentheses. So put it the same size as before, 16.8. Uh, then plt dot scatter, we pass in x, y, and of course the color is going to be black. So this is just going to be our data set as shown uh, above a bit earlier. And then we add in uh, the plot of our predictions. So same x, the y in this case is going to be predictions. And I want it to be in blue and I'm going to specify the line width uh, to be equal to 2 just to make sure that we can see it. Uh, now let's just copy the labels because it's going to be exactly the same. The same, sorry. Uh, let's take PLT. I'll show as well. Awesome. Let's run it, and boom! As you can see, we have our straighted, our straight line plotted on our graph. Uh, that's awesome. Perfect. So let's move on to the next portion, where we will assess the quality of our uh, model. So to do so, we're actually going to use the uh, stats library. So I'm going to re-specify again my X and my Y. And we're going to fit another linear uh, model, but using the uh, stats library. So specify the exogenous variable as sm.addConstant X. And then the estimator is simply sm.ols. That stands for ordinary least squares. That's the method we're using. Pass in Y, pass in X, and we fit. Finally, you can print a summary of the estimator and you should see the following result. 
So as you can see, we have an R squared value of 0.6. So that is not very good. Only 60% of the variability is explained. The S statistic is 312, which is much larger than one. So it seems that our model is kind of good. And as you can see here for TV, we get the same coefficients as before. And the p-value, although probably not zero, it seems to be less than 0 0.05. So it means that our, um, that our feature is indeed uh, relevant uh, in this model. So that was simple linear regression. Now let's move on to multiple linear regression. So in this case, we will consider all the features. So TV, uh, radio, and newspaper and see how that affects the sales. So all my X's, uh, to define them, I'm just gonna drop the sales column and make sure I dropped it uh, on axis equals one. So I mean, I'm dropping it only the column and not the rows. And the Y is gonna be the same. So data sales, dot values, dot reshape, uh, minus one and one. Again, I'm gonna fit using scikit-learn. So the regressor is linear regression and you call fit. So X's and Y, perfect. Now, as before, we're gonna print our coefficients. So the linear model is, skip a line, and then y is gonna be equal to, so let's start off by printing uh, the constant, right? So reg.intercept underscore square bracket zero. Uh, and then the coefficients will be in the same order as in the data set. So the first one, if I remember well, is gonna be for TV, so reg.coef. Zero, zero, and then um, you multiply that by uh, TV. Afterwards, we're gonna add the coefficient. Uh, so the second one, oh, uh, this is not in the brackets. Sorry about that. Radio, and let's put all of this inside the brackets. the squiggly brackets, right? And now we're gonna add the last coefficient, so reg.coef, uh, zero, one, two, sorry. And let's bring this a bit to the right so you can see the code. Uh, we multiply that by newspaper. Awesome, let's run this cell. Hopefully everything is gonna work, no. Regression object has no attribute co f. Uh, indeed, it does not. Uh, we need to add an underscore uh, on the coefficient of TV. So co f underscore. Awesome. There you go. There we have it. So uh, we have two as a constant, 0 0.04, so the same slope for TV, 0.18 for radio, and negative for newspaper. That is very interesting. We have a negative uh, effect from newspaper. So again, let's, fit, let's use the stats uh, library to assess the quality of our model. So I'm just gonna specify the X as np.colon stack. And then we take everything. So data TV, we're gonna take uh, data radio, right? Yes, data radio and data newspaper. Awesome, so this is our X, our features and the target again, is data sales. Our shape minus one, one. Awesome. So again, the exogenous variable, we're gonna do sm.add constant, we use x. We define our estimator, which is sm.ols, and then pass in y, pass in x. In this case, exog, right, dot fit, and we print the summary of our estimator. And you should get the following. Awesome, now as you can see, the R squared value is much larger than before. We have 0.897, so we're explaining almost 90% of, of the variability of the sales here. The F statistic, 570, again, larger than before. So it means that our model is uh, pretty good, actually, to predict the sales from that. And as you can see here, all the constants and all the coefficients. Now, as you see, for the last one, we have a p-value equal to 0.860. So that is larger than 0.05. And recall that 
uh, this coefficient here is the one for newspaper. So that means the newspaper is actually not relevant in our model and we could and actually we should take it out. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. If you want me to cover something, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. See you.